What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football sports betting and NASCAR home here at fakepigskin.com. I'm your host, Kyle Robert. You follow me on Twitter at NotoriousKRO. With me once again is Brian Twining. Brian Twining, it's Super Bowl time. We made it through the season. We uh, somehow, some way, 17 weeks, all through the playoffs, um, a haircut uh, almost derailed this whole entire Super Bowl, but... <laughs> But we made it. Uh, we are we are mere days away, and we are here to break down everything uh, from this game to props to the national anthem to a coin toss to some, maybe some Gatorade. Who knows? Uh, but how are you doing? And uh, are you very excited for this game? What's your what's your uh, what's your what's your excitement level? Let's go there. Uh, I gotta say. It, although I've probably done the least amount of research on this Super Bowl in terms of betting, probably in about five years, like this is probably the least research one, but that has nothing to do with me not wanting to watch the game. I think this is the most anticipated Super Bowl for me in some time, knowing that we're getting Tom Brady at the latter part of his career going up against the guy who's basically taken over the torch in terms of the goat of the NFL. And I just think this is this is the matchup that people dreamt of when Brady signed in Tampa, and it was the reason why the Bucks were the second most heavily bet team to win the Super Bowl this offseason, something that you and I both kind of tried to down talk preseason, and they definitely came back to bite us in the ass there with that. But, you know, I, I'm so excited to watch this game, dude. I will be diving in extremely hard this weekend, looking into bets and all sorts of stuff, as that's like the best part of the game. Yeah, I mean, we talked about the Bucks, right? Like everything was either either everything was going to click, it was going to work out great, and they were going to find their way to here, uh, playing their first playing the first team to ever play the Super Bowl at home, which is wild, uh, or it was going to be an absolute tire fire, and it looked like it was heading towards disaster when the whole Antonio Brown saga started, and why weren't they playing Mike Evans? And there's all kinds of stuff, but they got the chip righted. They got the the get both sides of the ball figured out. Um, they ha obviously having Tom Brady is incredible. This is like with Joe Montana was in the later stages of his career playing against Brady before he made the run. Like B Mahomes is one of the quarterbacks that could actually approach or beat Brady's records. Uh, what a guy that could go for or no in the world in the Super Bowl and, and be in the conversation with Montana. Like the fact that we get to see them play each other is wild, and I'm obviously very excited for it. So, uh, Let's start with just the you know the the lines. So we got uh, we got some line movement today. Uh, it was it was Chiefs minus three, uh, heavy juice towards the Chiefs. Now it's gone to three and a half. Um, the Bucks three and a half a money line at one forty five. Uh, we got a total sitting at fifty six. Where's your head at for this game? What's your expectations for how it may play out? I got to be honest with you, man. Like I, I am completely rooting for Tampa Bay as a Michigan fan, as somebody who had a Michigan Tom Brady jersey, as a person what if, who had... What if who, Chad Henney, Henney plays, though? Then what are you going to do? Well, I got to go with the with the old man of the group in, in, in that case, especially considering I remember having to create Tom Brady in Madden because he wasn't even in the game during his rookie season. And yeah. then, the, and then when he got big, I remember how excited I was because I knew about him before everyone else. And then, of course, everyone became a fan. I jumped off the wagon, and the fact that they just kept winning it got kind of disgusting. And then now he's in Tampa Bay, like nobody thought he could do it, or everyone thought he could do it. So, I it's hard for me not to bet for the Buccaneers in this instance, but. How the hell can somebody watch what the Chiefs have done over the past three years with this guy, Patrick Mahomes, who's come onto the scene and just done things that we've never seen before and bet against this team? They are yeah. they are an unstoppable force right now. And every time it, me, every time people discount their abilities or we think that they're going to falter, like last week, what do they do? They come out and they show why they are the best team in the NFL, why they continue to be on this upward you know, this upward trek. And like you said, why Patrick Mahomes has as good a chance as anyone ever will at potentially catching Tom Brady in terms of the, the stature that he accumulates in the league. 
Yeah, so it's really interesting because obviously, you know, until last week, the the Bucks were like 0-7 and one against the spread. They were a team that mm-hmm. was having trouble uh, covering the spread. Not you know you know it. I don't know if it was like a motivation thing or they just they they knew this was the what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to play in the Super Bowl. They have the team like they have the horses. That team is built to go multiple Super Bowl appearances, multiple championships. So I, I feel it felt like they had. Uh, kind of a goal in mind, and they had to do just enough to keep winning, and obviously they were doing that. Uh, this is also a rematch of a game we saw earlier in the year uh, w- between these two teams, so I think that's really interesting that we kind of got a preview of what this game may look like, and now we're going into, uh, obviously, a game in Tampa that's going to be interesting. Um, it's supposed to be really uh, a lot of rain, too. There, I mean, the forecast is calling for like 65, 70% rain with scattered thunderstorms. So I, that'll be interesting to see how that affects the play of both of these offenses. So as of now, three and a half, 60% of the bets on the chiefs, 40% on the box money is about even. I'll be curious to see as the weekend rolls along, yeah. who's getting involved. Um, obviously this is going to be one of the house highly bet games. Typically we're talking about sharps versus squares and sharps are putting down significantly more. While that's the case and they're putting down more per bet, there's going to be so much public action that the amount of money is is going to be into, you know, there may be, a, you know, as many people putting on $100 bets as there are, yeah. you know, making up for those 10000 20000 50000 Mattress Max getting inv- involved with his Three millions. and a half mil on the Buccaneers it, plus three I mean, and a half today. <laughs> it it makes crazy. sense, right? If you're, a mat- if you're a mattress store owner that you want to get national notoriety and free sure. pub, you make one of these $3.5 million bets and you get not only the money if you win but you also get all this public free pr free you know notoriety all that stuff and then all of a sudden people in in texas are going to mattress mac to get it um so i guess part of me is okay we've seen the bucks really come together as the playoffs have gone along their defense has been really strong they've actually been running the ball brady was okay against the packers definitely made a few interceptions that I'm kind of shocked that Aaron Rodgers and company didn't take advantage of. Um, Let's not even go there. But how do we see this game playing out? Right. Cause like, I feel like it's either the chiefs roll and their offense is playing amazing and their defense makes a few big plays. And maybe Miko Hardman ends up in the end zone, whether it's on a punt return, kick return, or it's ugly. It's sloppy. It's gross. It's a lot of Leonard Fournette. Um, and the Bucks defense and the and Leonard Fournette kind of carry the ball and, and win this game. We got it over under sitting at 50. It's to open at 57. It's down to 56, 56 and a half, uh, depending on where you look. Do you think this is a closer gross game? Do you think this is more of a blowout? You know, where, where's your head at for, for kind of just the overall, cause it feels like we're due for a real stinker. And I don't know if that's going to be a 42, 14 chiefs roll or a 23, 13 chiefs get stuck in the mud and can't figure it out. Uh, but like, you know, from, from an overall p- points production uh, standpoint, where are you at? So because I've been so terrible at uh, guessing over unders this game, let's take this with a grain of salt, but it, you know, factoring in the weather here and knowing like, I, I really don't think that's going to have that big of an, an effect on the passing games in the, in yeah. this, during this game. But I do think that we will see us you know, a likely lower scoring game. I, I, I like the under in this matchup because I do think that both of these defenses have the ability to slow down the opposition. I know last time they, these two teams played Tyree Kill just absolutely ran past Tampa Bay defenders, literally and figuratively. Um, yeah. Patrick Mahomes went for over four, four bills. I don't see that happening again because Tampa Bay has kind of adjusted what they've been doing on defense. We saw them give Aaron Rodgers problems twice this season and yeah. you know Aaron Rodgers is as good if not at level with Patrick Mahomes in terms of his abilities uh you know as a quarterback and they were able to kind of slow down Devontae Adams it, it during their last game and the, actually their the two get two matchups against each other so I do think that Tampa's ability to get to the quarterback as well with Kansas City missing both their starting tackles I think will have a major effect I think that Tampa Bay leaning a little bit more heavily on the running game as well over the past few weeks to try to limit the opposing pass rushes of getting the Brady, I think will come into play here. 
So I'll probably be avoiding the total for the game. And I like the first half under here. You know, I'm looking at this to be kind of a lower paced game early on. And then in the second half, it kind of picking up. Yeah, I mean, the the loss of Eric Fisher is obviously huge. We saw a week ago when Bakhtiari went out, all of a sudden the Packers had a lot of issues protecting Rodgers, and all of a sudden the Bronco, the Bucks were able to do what they wanted to do. So um, I, I don't know that seeing that again would be that crazy i i think it's um i think it's definitely in play i'm i'm gonna be like i'm i'm with you like i think from a side in total perspective um i don't know that i'll be getting in on either of those i think for you know obviously we'll be picking uh our sides and our totals just for the the hell of the podcast but i think where we're gonna find the most value and find the most uh potential is in props in you know some of the other stuff that we're gonna talk about especially in game betting too i mean last week when you looked at that buffalo kansas city star and buffalo jumped out to a to a lead anybody yep. who thought that that's the way that game was gonna go for the rest of the day was is crazy and you should have known like immediately oh let me bet kansas city whatever the line is and i I jumped in on kansas city money line at plus one at plus money brian kansas city money line when they were down i think nine to nothing yeah it was nine nothing Uh, yeah nine nothing i jumped in at plus 110 and i it was i ended up the second half i was just like oh this is easy like yeah that that, that's the that's so that's my thing is for a slow uh start is if the Chiefs start slow, are they because the Bucks are are doing some stuff and producing, and all of a sudden they're up and port, porting on points, or do you think it's kind of okay? The Chiefs are feeling it out. Uh, you know, we see a little more running than on both sides. I, I, I'm very curious to see, but I I want to talk some of these props. I want to start with Super Bowl MVP odds because there's a lot to jump into. Um, here's some of the big names. We can kind of use some of our expectations for how this game may play out to, to kind of figure it out. Uh, I will say I did, I was doing some, some crunching of numbers. Uh, there's been 30, uh, quarterbacks to win the MVP, uh, in the super bowl. Uh, typically, especially as of late, it's been a lot of, a lot of quarterbacks basically dating back to, uh, 2010 when it was breezed. We've only had, uh three non quarterbacks. I will say in Brady Super Bowl wins, he's not had all the MVPs. Uh Julian Edelman won. Um uh, Brady, Brady, yeah. So Deion the, Branch. I mean, Deion <laughs> Branch won. So you know they it does uh it doesn't necessarily have to be a Brady if the if you think the Bucks are gonna win. Um but the quarterbacks have dominated this award. Um, especially of late, and that's why you see the minus 105 for Mahomes, the plus 210 for Brady. Uh, beyond there, is there any names that interest you? Because I can tell you right now, Travis Kelsey at 13 to 1, 10 to 1, like if you're getting double digits with him, uh, I think that's something that makes a hell of a lot of sense. Yeah, I, I would have to say that both Kelsey and Tyree Kill are extremely intriguing. However, I will say, to me looking at this game with Patrick Mahomes ability to run and we've seen it multiple times in the playoffs where he likes to take off and you know get those first downs and he's had a I think a rushing touchdown in four of his seven career playoff games so if yeah. Patrick Mahomes runs in a touchdown and say throws for three three TDs as well unless either of those guys catches all three of those they're not going to give the MVP to them so I yeah. I would lean on the side of Mahomes in that case. Now with Tampa Bay, I think there's a higher probability of one of those pass catchers getting the MVP over Brady. It like like we saw with Edelman with the 10 catch 140 yard day in kind of a sloppy game. Um I you know, I like Chris Godwin as kind of a sleeper because he's been kind of that short yard shorter yardage we need first down so let me let me get it to him kind of day i think he has a better chance of having a double digit catch over 100 yards and a touchdown than say a mike evans who's more likely to have a four or five catch 100 yards and a td which that's not going to get you mvp as a pass catcher yeah so you really have to build a narrative or a script of how it may work if you're going to go with someone not named Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady. Yeah. As you mentioned with Edelman, uh, big catch production, really important to the game. Um, obviously, catching a lot of passes from Brady. But you know, if you're looking at um, 
storylines that could make sense. I think I think Travis Kelsey is very much in play. I think if 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 Mahomes throws for two fifty and two and one hundred and eighty of the or one hundred and you know fifteen yards and two touchdowns go to Kelsey, I could see him getting the award, especially if it's a lower scoring defensive struggle. Uh, I think Miko Hardman is in play. I think if he is involved as a pass catcher, you know, obviously there there are some issues. Demarcus Robinson's already out. We'll see what Sammy Watkins can do. But if McCall Hardman, say, gets an end around for a touchdown, say gets a kick return or a punt return for a touchdown, and then has 80 yards and, you know, five catches, maybe a touchdown there, or maybe he gets, you know, a couple of those things, I could see a scenario where he's the guy that that kind of gets the attention. And obviously, you know, it's if if we're it's easy to to oh well Mahomes threw him the ball, so that's why. And uh but you know, kick return, punt return, guys that are gonna be involved that way, end around, I think that makes a lot of sense. I also like a defensive player to win. Yep. I was, I was especially, just gonna mention es- that. Especially if you like the Bucks to win. I think a big way they win is defense. So Jason Pierre Paul at 60 to or 70 to 1 makes a hell of a lot of sense. Shaq Barrett at 50 to 1. I also like their their DBs. Uh I was looking at Carlton Davis. I was looking at uh where's the other guy I was talking about earlier? I was, you know, in a little group chat with my buddies. Um well, Antoine I, I, Winfield. I was just like, gonna say Winfield, who's kind of like Tampa Bay's version of Tyron Matthew. Yeah. I, I will say though that the last three defensive players who won MVP in the Super Bowl are all linebackers who mm-hmm. either had multiple sacks, a interception, and or like a fumble return for a touchdown in terms of looking at Malcolm Smith for Seattle, Von Miller for Denver, and then of course you had Ray Lewis, who yeah. I'm I'm looking at the at the previous MVP winners here on the ESPN list. And it, all it says for him is he led a Ravens dominant defense. Um, yeah. So he's kind of the, you know, the, but that was a team that was rally. led by Trent Dilfer and not, you yeah. know, Jamal Lewis. Like there, the offensive side didn't have a Mahomes or a Brady or even like yeah. a Joe Flacco. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, you know, Shaq Barrett, Antoine Winfield make a hell of a lot of sense. Maybe they get a safety. Maybe they get a pick six. Maybe they get a fumble recovery for a touchdown, a couple sacks. Like I, I feel like if they're dominant in the backfield, they're getting to Mahomes constantly, especially with a bad offense or you know banged up offensive line. Like that is very much a pl- in play, um, and you're getting and you could take a shot with a few of these guys because fifty to one, seventy to one, triple digits. Like you, you could throw five bucks on a on a hundred to one guy on a two hundred to one guy, and you're gonna have a really nice payday. You could take twenty to twenty five bucks if you think the bucks are gonna be the the right side, um, and, and have a field day on a few of these MVP props. Yeah, I think my two favorite defensive players are going to be JPP just because uh, they seem to kind of started to drop him back in coverage a little bit. And if Mm -hmm. Kansas City, they love to run those little tight end screens, those little flare passes, those little shovel passes. If JPP is able to pick one of those off and score like a short touchdown and also have multiple sacks and Tampa Bay winds up winning this game in the low 20s, I think he makes a great bet. And then somebody that we didn't mention is a Frank Clark who mm-hmm. is really the Chiefs only like down lineman who gets to the quarterback at a consistent rate. And yeah. we all know Tom Brady is not fleet of foot. He's not avoiding anybody as of right now at this stage of his career. And he is a guy who could have the two and a half, three sack day with a fumble, you know, force for a touchdown or something like that. If, if the sloppiness comes into play and this is a lower scoring affair. Yeah, see, I like Frank Clark or even Chris Jones over Tyron Matthew. I know Matthew can get the yeah. picks, and I know he can make a few plays, but um, I don't know. I just it it feels like a little too a little too easy there, and I I don't I don't know if I necessarily want to go that way. Um, there, you can also bet like based on positions and stuff too. So like if you if you like a couple position like that, you could bet linebacker and we're all pulling all these odds from DraftKings Sportsbook. Obviously you have to look at whatever draft, whatever sports book you happen to have access to will Hill fan uh, offshore, whatever it is. You can bet linebacker at 12 to one. You can bet DB at DB defensive back at 18 to one to win Super Bowl MVP. So then you get a few. It's like, you're like, I'm looking at, you know, these four or five defenders that I really like. Um, you know, if you, you could 
obviously put sprinkle a little bit on each one of them if you get a nice payout but you could also just go like uh, there's there's eight guys that you know but a lot between linebacker and defensive back and i could put you know it's a little bit on each each at 12 to 1 and 18 to 1 and and maybe you could win it that way and, and see if there's a way to find value um just figure out what you want to bet on that and then see if it's better to spread it out but you know getting an extra guy because the year malcolm smith won nobody saw that coming no um and then obviously the year the broncos dominated von miller was incredible and that's why he won so if you get a von miller performance out of shaq barrett out of chris jones out of frank frank clark um that's how you could win that too so there there's a few ways to attack it uh brian do you want to dive into some game props? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's start from the jump, and let's talk some national anthem betting because uh, <laughs> it's, this is going to be fun. I'm, I'm, not doing, I, I'm not doing coin toss. Like, if you want to bet the coin toss. I bet, bet this toss, every year, national anthem. It's one of my favorite If you want to bet the coin toss, like, find a buddy who wants the other side and just bet 100 bucks. That way you're not losing or 50 Wait, bucks or 20 let bucks. Me- let me just hit on the coin toss. I wanted to hit on this. So I did a little okay. research into this. Six of the last seven Super Bowls have landed on tails. Prior to that, it had gone five consecutive heads. So yeah. I think that this year, I always bet tails. I've always been a tails never fails guy. I think yeah. this is the one that bucks the trend. Just like when you're playing roulette and you got that long trend of black, 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 black. You got to bet red because it's eventually going to come up. All right. Well, we can, we can bet with each other, Brian. I think that will be more that way. Cause like you're, you're, it's a 50, 50 proposition that you're getting negative value on. So, uh, you know, the, the casino is taking some free money. Like obviously sure. If you feel great about it and it's a super bowl, right? You want to go nuts, go have fun, whatever. Uh, so the national anthem, the line is currently set at a minute 59 at minus minus one forty five. People are hammering the under. Who's uh, singing this year? So Jasmine Sullivan is going to be doing the national anthem. Uh, so there's a few things. So 11 of the last 13 national anthems have hit the under. She has done two other national anthems that are recorded that people have watched and timed and all that stuff. Both of them have gone under. So you're thinking the under is getting pounded. It's always been the under. Uh, she's typically sung fast. There's two things this year that are giving me a little cause for pause. The stadium is going to be significantly less full. Uh, obviously, they're going to have some people there and healthcare workers and all that stuff. But uh, traditionally, I think it speeds up a little bit because people are nervous because there's hundreds of thousands of people watching and people all over the world, whatever. But they're all. She's all. It's also going to be a duet with Eric Church. Yes. Eric Church is a country singer, a little bit slower. I'm wondering because of the duet factor and because of less uh, people in the stands. I'm wondering if it's just a little bit slower and if it goes over, maybe say two o three, two o five, and you can get plus money on that. Yes. So this is something uh, I've. <laughs> I, I've never mentioned this before, but I'm currently uh, attending school online right now, and I'm taking a history of of music class, basically history of rock and roll. And one of the one of the things they talk about in like the old R and B days, you know, real R and B, rhythm and blues, and like soul music, and just especially during times that hit on social social stuff. And when we're doing the national anthem, especially in this time in this current era, there's a mm-hmm. lot of imp- improv that happens during a song where they go into a little more of an elaborate you know length of of music and like you said with the duet here i really do think that this could be something that will likely sneak the over because we may see see them kind of feed off each other's music and singing and this will not be one of those rushed performances like why like we've seen of, of late yeah, because I was all ready to be like, oh, look at the under, look at the tradition, look at the way the betting has gone so far. But when I saw the Eric Church part and I just – there, something is making me say over. And I, I'm I'm Mr. Contrarian, right? Like if I see everyone doing one thing, I'm going to go the other way. Uh, and that's just that's just who I am. So I, I like the over, at, especially at plus money. But if you want to bet the under because of all the, the trends and all the information and because that's where the money is coming in, I totally get it uh should we talk some player props oh hell yeah these are these are great so i'm all over travis kelsey uh i know it's been you know they've been big numbers you're looking at you know eight and a half receptions you're looking at 94 and a half yards you're looking at 
uh you know uh, i can look at the touchdown uh touchdown props let's see here uh let me pull these up but yeah i'm i'm all over travis kelsey um i think he i think he has a monster game here um he was just uh, he was at 80 yards and i think eight or eight or nine catches um uh, in their last matchup he's so important to what they do mahomes looks for him so often uh, I think he has a monster game here. Yeah, I mean, Travis Kelsey has had eight or more receptions in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of his last 10 games. I mean, mm-hmm. this was a guy who last week was one of my favorite bets too for over receptions just because of that fact. Like in games that are close or in games that the Chiefs are, you know, within the other team is in within one score, who is who is Mahomes looking for? He's looking for his do everything tight end in Travis Kelsey. So I, I like the over and the receptions prop. And then also the yardage. I mean, the guy hasn't had less than 80 yards receiving except for one time over the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 games. Um, you know, we're looking at him eclipsing a hundred in each of the last two games in four of the last six. So Travis Kelsey is basically a glorified wide receiver playing tight, the tight end position. And if mm-hmm. you're getting tight end numbers with him, like give me that all day. And then well, and they touch- do those little, the little underneath things where it's like a forward lateral basically. And that counts as a reception. So like he could easily have 12, 15 catches, um, you know, even if they're, even if it's for under yards um, and obviously he has that big play ability, the ability to catch it over the middle of the field, take it for an extra 20. I mean, I just feel like, I feel like nine for 105 and a touchdown or two is very much in play. Yeah. I mean, and then if, if you really like him uh, in that term, like if, if you like him to catch two touchdowns in this game, then yeah, I, I would not not bet him to win the MVP also, because if, it, if this is a game where the wet, you know, the wet conditions do affect Mahomes and he only throws the two touchdowns, but they're both to Kelsey and Kelsey has a monster day, then yes, he's likely going to win the MVP, you know, on that too, Kelsey right now for first touchdown is six and a half to one. Like those are fantastic yeah. odds for a guy who is basically he's, he's their running back inside the five and his number one target down there as well in the, in the passing game. Yeah. Like I'm looking like they're him and Tyree kill are both minus 175 to score a touchdown. Um, that feels like a lot, but, um, I don't know if I could get down there, but yeah, first touchdown. Um, I think Tyree kills in the interesting for MVP too. Like it much in that me call Hardman. I was just kind of, like he could easily like get an end around. He could get all kinds of stuff and he gets punt returns. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I like Darrell Williams to score a touchdown. And I think at, uh, you know, plus 150 to score, I think 13 to one to score the first touchdown could make a lot of sense. I think the Chiefs could keep it lower scoring, getting close and run it in the first touchdown. Um, I also like Mahomes to run it in for a touchdown. And I, I know like those numbers touchdown. Yeah. 18, like, 18 to one like that. Yeah. Yeah, because they they've really sucked. Like they know a lot of people are going to be getting into this stuff, so they've taken numbers that like normally you get Mahomes at two or three to one to score on any time touchdown, but because it's the Super Bowl and they know a lot of people are going to be betting, uh, they take a lot of money. Although I guess he's plus two fifty. That's that's pretty good. Well, like, especially I thought, like I said, I mean, in four of his seven playoff games, he has a rushing touchdown. So yeah. we're looking at a guy who's not afraid to you know keep the ball in his hands and get into the end zone. Yep. Um. Anything, what else do you like from the Chiefs' perspective at, in terms of rushing totals, receiving totals? Like at, at running back, is it Darrell Williams? Do you think we see more Clyde Edwards Alaire? Like, because there's some really low numbers for Alaire with the kind of uncertainty about how much he may play. If you believe that he can go off, you could have a really nice field day with some of these, um, some of these numbers. Yeah, I worry about what Kansas City is going to be able to do on the ground against this Tampa Bay team with the addition of Vita Valle down, you know, uh, at defensive tackle for this Buccaneers defense. They are back to being basically the top defense in the NFL in terms of limiting the opposing team's rushing attack. And if this, if the weather was perfect in Florida this weekend, I would be guessing that this would be like a fifty-plus pass attempt game for Patrick Mahomes. Um, I do think Kansas city will try to keep the ball on the ground more than what we would have seen normally. But that being said, like I would probably lean the under on 
pretty much every Chiefs running backs prop because I don't think that they're going to be relying on them at all. Even if they're winning in the game, you're still going to see Kansas City put the ball in Patrick Mahomes' hand. Yeah, and I think I think if you like the under on props, be as patient as possible because people don't like to bet unders. People don't like to bet unders. They're gonna and you're gonna get an extra five yards. You're gonna get an extra reception. You're gonna get all this stuff, and then you can go back underneath. Um, but yeah, Darrell Williams right now rushing yards is you know depending where you look. Will Hill has it twenty six and a half up to thirty at DraftKings. Uh, rushing attempts between seven and nine. Uh, you know, receiving yards. I like him as a pass catcher out of the backfield. If Clyde edwards alaire isn't there, um, I feel like I feel like Darrell Williams could be a sneaky way because a lot of the juice is going towards Clyde edwards alaire And if Darrell Williams is the guy, not Clyde edwards alaire because Alaire's still banged up, you could get a lot of nice value. So uh, if you want to bet the under on Alaire, bet the over on Williams, you could set yourself up for a nice payday. Um, between those two. Yeah. And two, like Clyde Edwards for Lair looked really good last week. Like he, he looked like he had that burst back. I know he's not probably not fully healthy, but yeah. they've had a week and a half now of preparation mm-hmm. basically. So that's another week and a half of more rehab, more, more work being done to get better back to full strength. So, yep. I'm also curious to see what the injuries along the offensive line, how effective they can be running the ball. Cause as you mentioned, this box team is really good at stopping the run. So there could be a lot there. Um, let's shift our focus. Let's talk about the, the box side a little bit. I'm all over the Scotty Miller props. Uh, he, his, his over uh, catches is one and a half on DraftKings at plus plus one thirty. I think he has two catches for sure. Like I'm, I, you know, I'm not I saying go put, go put your mortgage on it because like you know it's it's a <laughs> it's a prop and like but like that feels like a really good value and then the total yards is twenty and a half like I could see him having one catch for thirty five yards easy um, and then you're and then you cash that over so I like Scott Miller a lot here obviously you know we'll see what the what the Bucks do how healthy Antonio Brown is. Uh, you know, Evans Godwin obviously can get a lot of attention. We'll see what the tight ends do. Like, I was curious, like, you know, everyone was talking about Gronkowski, but maybe Brate's the guy. Like, in the past couple of games, it's been a lot of Brate, not much Gronk. Or maybe we go back to Gronk while everyone's thinking Brate. I don't know. I feel like I feel like Tampa Bay is utilizing Gronkowski's best skill at this stage of his career, which is his blocking. blocking. Like, he is mm-hmm. such a good blocker. People don't yeah. realize, like, this guy could be a an offensive tackle if he were to put on probably 60, 70 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's been, he's been a beast. And um, as I mentioned, if I, if you like the bucks, I think it's a lot of running the ball, playing really good defense. So they're going to keep Gronk in as much as possible to, to make sure they can create those run gaps uh, for, for that running back on that side. And I want to talk Leonard Fournette. Uh, I'm not a Leonard Fournette guy, but I'm going to be betting some Leonard Fournette overs, uh, over I three think... and a half receptions. Like, yeah, with, yeah. Uh, that, that to me, I know it's, it's not great juice. I mean, it's minus one sixty five or something. Yeah. Like still, but I mean, what is the, what are the chances that Tom Brady's not going to dump it off to a running back? Yeah. And it's not I, I, wrote, Joe. Nope. And I was looking at, uh, Fournette's basically been, uh, like, three or more catches in like seven of his last 10 or something. Uh, he's been getting the ball. Yeah. So you're paying heavy juice, but I like the over. Um, I like, I like, and I like his rushing attempts and rushing yards. I, if you think the bucks are going to like, you've got to build your bets to the narrative, right? So, and you could go a couple ways. You can go chiefs blowout or bucks, you know, close win or, or bucks domination. Um, and you can kind of, Bink, okay, I'm going to take this, but I'm also going to take this. I just think Fournette's, I think the Chiefs can be ran on, and I think Fournette's been really good. Uh, So you can look at his rushing total numbers, you know, between 47 and 50. I think he can get over 50 yards. I think he can get, um, I don't feel as good about the the attempts, but like 12 to 15 feels reasonable. And if you're getting the over, especially if you go to MGM where you can get plus money on over at 11 and a half, I like that. Um receiving yards 25 to 27 there is there is a way to attack this too especially if you have access to multiple books where you can find a number like say points bet that has 
you know, oh, you could go over 23 and a half. And then if you have access to MGM or Will Hill, you get 26 and a half, 27 and a half. And then you kind of protect yourself both ways and potentially middle it. So um, that that is another way to attack it where but I, I like I like Fournette. I like his rushing yards. I like his receiving yards and I like his and I like his receptions. Yeah, I think Fournette is probably one of my favorite books players to kind of attack during the Super Bowl because I do think he will be heavily utilized, especially in a game where I do think the Chiefs are the better team and I think the Chiefs will be winning and you know forcing Tampa Bay to kind of throw the ball, which kind of leads into my next bet. Uh I was just looking on DraftKings Sportsbook and they have players to fumble. And I I mean I really like Tom Brady plus 350 here to lose a fumble in a game that they're going to be trailing and having to throw the ball a ton get the ball down the field against the good chiefs pass rush. Um, that's kind of a crazy bet, but you know, I'll probably throw five to 10 bucks on that just to get a small, small little addition and not be upset. If I lose speaking of Mr. Brady, I kind of like a rushing touchdown from Mr. Brady, whether it's a, a QB sneak on the one yard line, whether it's a, you know, play play action fall over the the goal line oh, I, don't know. I was just gonna say you know he's not running any bootlegs plus 425 35 to one to score the first touchdown like i could see him i see i i just i envisioned him falling in the end zone getting up spiking it and like cheering and how excited he's gonna be for scoring a touchdown i just i it feels like it's been a while since we've seen that and I feel like, like I was looking at his rush yards prop. My only concern is that if the Chiefs get a few sacks, that he can't make up that difference. Because I think it was like half a yard, basically, or a yard. Oh, I think, no. I, I think he can. I think he can get the the yard. I just worry about the sacks. Yeah, and he ends up yeah. with negative like seven. So I, I'm not going to go there. But I do like Mr. Brady at at 425 to score an anytime touchdown. Yeah, you know I. I always kind of bet those quarterback touchdowns in these in these big games here because when they get down to it, I mean, there's there's less there's less risk involved when you run a quarterback sneak. Uh, I mean, unless you're Patrick Mahomes and you know he hurts his leg when they're doing that. Um, yeah. You know it, that. And that being said, that leads me into another bet that I'll probably be making um, the longest or the shortest yardage for a touchdown during the game is currently set at one and a half yards. And I was looking and over on the score. Um, I think it's Alex Cole Dej I've butchering his name wrote a piece in 21 of the last 31 Super Bowls. The shortest touchdown has gone under one and a half yards. So we're looking at, you know, more than 66% chance that the shortest touchdown of the game will be shorter than two yards of, of length. So I'll be betting that. I know the juice is very similar to four nets catch total minus 165, but this is a bet that I'll probably be betting slightly more knowing that if the teams do get on the one or the half yard line, they in all probability, they're going to punch it in. Yeah. I like that call quite a bit. Um, you know, Brian and I will, will tweet out like, uh, our cards to maybe on Saturday or, or Sunday morning before the, before be the, uh, yeah, we'll try or we'll, we'll, as we add stuff to our card, we'll try and tweet it out. But, um, you know, all the official stuff we'll, we'll get out to you guys so you can see what we're actually betting. But, you know, this is just like, okay, we're figuring stuff out. We're putting it all together. Um, I like some of the sack props too. Like Jason Pierre Paul over a half a sack is plus 120. Uh, Ooh. Frank Clark is plus 150. Uh, Shaq Barrett is plus 120. I think there could be a couple sacks uh on on either side that that makes a lot of sense um and you could find some some value there one of the ones that i also really like is like taking a chance on the first interception because you're getting great odds if you can if you can somehow guess the guy who gets this i still remember way back when uh baltimore played san francisco i was able to hit on Ed Reed getting the first interception of the game. And I think that was like a 30 to one bet or something. And that was, you know, 10 bucks for a pretty nice return there. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is another one where when you're looking at this, you're looking at a guy like an Antoine Winfield, 22 to one, you're looking at a, you know, like for me, I like Jason Pierre Paul to potentially get one of those things. He's at 66 to one. I know defensive ends and linebackers don't normally get those, but I mean, those are, astronomical odds for the potential of something like that happening for, yeah. for a small amount of money. That makes, that makes the game that much more interesting for sure. 
Uh, Chris Godwin receiving yards, 73 and a half. Uh, receptions five and a half. Um, I like his sport. over receptions. I'm not. I'm not okay. big on his yardage total, but I like his. Yeah, receptions. yeah. I think that makes sense. Um, I also, you know, let me look up. I want to look up something really quick. Um, the prop shop on on uh, FTN bets is awesome. By the way, if you're looking for a way to look around and see where the values are of, of different ones and see where you could find uh, Cameron Brates receiving yards is between 27 and a half and 30 yards. I, I like that quite a bit. Um, and his, I don't like, you know, his receptions of two and a half. I don't know if he can get to three, three or four, um, but I do like the yards cause I feel like that's in play. And then I feel like a touchdown's in play um, and you're getting basically two and a half, three to one. Uh, okay, Brian, I think any other props, I mean, do you want to dive into Gatorade or any of that kind of stuff? Oh, that's funny. I, I was just looking at that. Cause that's one that I always look at betting and I don't really care about what the trends are or what the colors have previously been. I'm, I'm never going to bet the, the lowest odds one. I'm always looking in the middle here. Like for me, I like the clear slash water because you're starting to see a lot of the Gatorade flavors that are going to the zeros or the lesser calorie ones be be white of color or clear. And I do think that a lot of teams are trying to get a little bit less sugary or so, you know, whatever. We're we're in the age of let's be healthy. So I like the clear the clear slash water. It's at three and a half to one for the Gatorade. Yeah. What's the, what's the what's red? Uh, two to one. See, because I feel like both teams are red, and I feel like that's going to be over bet. I don't I don't know. Like I feel like orange or green could be in play, but you know it's it's a total crapshoot, right? So oh, it's interesting. Um, Yellow, green, and lime fall under the same thing. So you're getting three three colors in one for a three to one odds. Like that that may actually be the play. Yeah, uh, I will say that the line for the over the game has actually moved again. It's back to Chiefs minus three minus one thirteen. Oh come on, uh, get under three, baby. I don't think we do. I think it. I think it ping pongs between three and three and a half um, the the rest of the way. So Brian, let's let's dive into it. Let's let's get brass tacks. Um, if you're betting a side, and you are you betting Chiefs? Are you betting uh, Bucks? And, and are you taking the points? Or are you going money line? Ah oh, man, I will be rooting for the Buccaneers. Let me just get that out of the way. I want Tom Brady to just. Be that be that a hole right because he he needs another double, ring. Poor guy. I want to see I want to see him flip the double birds uh, to everybody. Um, but that being said, I gotta back the Chiefs in this game. I like them minus three. I I will probably bet them minus three and a half if I can get that that number of one hundred four. Um, yeah. and and I like the under. Yeah, I mean you can get the chiefs money line at minus 159 and draft Kings. I, I like that. Um, then you're not worrying about the, but I, I just, I, I feel like the chiefs are going to win and I feel like they're going to win sizably. And that the, the under, I think would be my play as well. I do worry that if the chiefs have another big win, like they did against the bills, um, it's because the could... other team can't do much. Right, right. And it's and it's 42 to 14. All of a sudden we're going you're hitting 56. So I'm more a little worried about that. I just the I think the but between the Bucks defense being better and the Chiefs having offensive line issues, I think I think it I think under is the play. But yeah, I'm gonna take Chiefs minus three. I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the under. Um what else <laughs> what what else is on your betting card uh from a prop standpoint? All right, so these are the ones that I have written down so far. So I'm going to be going over the national anthem length of a minute, 56 seconds. I like Chris Godwin over five and a half receptions. Travis Kelsey over eight and a half receptions. Leonard Fournette over three and a half receptions. Miko Hardman over 28 and a half receiving yards, which I find to be absolutely ridiculous. Um, this is an interesting one that I found. Mike Evans over 24 and a half yards for his longest reception of the game, as I do think that they will be looking to exploit his size against the, the Chiefs D DBs in this game. Um, I like Tom Brady to lose a fumble at plus 350. I'm going the under one and a half yards for the shortest total total yardage of, the t of a touchdown. And then, of course, the Chiefs minus three and the under of the game total of 56. 
yeah uh i like i like a lot of that um i am i'm working on my card as well uh i'm i'm all over four net i like over 48 and a half i like over three and a half receptions um i will probably be looking at him for maybe two touchdowns if i'm if i'm in a scenario where Ooh, I like he, uh because i i think yeah i think i think a, I, I like i like the chiefs and i like the under but i also like a scenario where the box keep it close and it's a lot of Fournette in the defense and much like we saw against green bay and i think Fournette has a nice game i think he has a nice game either way but i think a double a double touchdown is very much in play and actually Fournette in a defense could lead to a four net super bowl mvp which would be fucking wild but uh, i think i think it's very much in play uh darrell williams to score a touchdown is going to be on my card i'm taking the over uh 94 and a half receiving yards for kelsey i'm taking over 20 and a half receiving yards for scott miller um I'm going to take the over eight and a half receptions for Travis Kelsey. I'm going to take the over one and a half catches for Scott Miller. Um, I am going to, as you said, take the over two and a half receptions for Michael Hardman. Um, I'm going to try and find a rushing prop for him. Actually, let me see what FTN has. Ooh, I like that. that a lot. Uh, Miko Hardman because DraftKings doesn't have it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So, uh, longest to score a touchdown. Yeah, I like I like him to score a touchdown at two. If you especially you can get the plus two seventy five over at Bet MGM. Um, I'm trying to find. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't see a rushing props, but I'm I'm gonna be curious if they if they add that. I don't know if they will. Um, uh, but I think Miko Hardman. That there could make a lot of sense, um, and I'm going to take the over on the national anthem, just like you. I, I, you know, I, I wanted to take the under, and and I just, I don't know, I, f- I feel it, I feel it. Um, and I'm going to look at the Darrell Williams stuff. I'm going to look at uh, his his rush attempts over eight and a half, and I'm going to look at his rushing yards over thirty and a half. Um, you know, it, I I feel like he could be the guy and, and be in play, and Clyde edwards alaire takes a little bit of a backseat. Um, and if in a scenario where the but where the Chiefs win, like I think they can, um, it could be a lot of running in the second half and kind of making up those yards, even if it's a lot of running in the pile and falling down. You know, um, even those know, two yard plays add yeah, up. Yeah, t- ten game. carries for thirty seven yards and a touchdown or two is very much in play for Darrell Williams. Um, and even a few catches out of the backfield. So, uh, and as I mentioned, make sure you're following Brian and I on Twitter. We will try and tweet out as many of our picks as we can at notorious KRO at greasy rules 14. If you're enjoying what we're doing, make sure you mash that thumbs up. Make sure you let us know in your comment, what is your favorite prop bet for the week? Um, Brian and I, you know, unloaded a ton. So jump on any of the ones we like. If there's something else you like, feel free to throw it in. Uh, we'll be checking that out coming back next week to talk about how that went. Uh, we're also breaking down every NASCAR race starting next week. We'll be talking Daytona, the Daytona 500, yeah. uh, from a betting and DFS angle. So make sure you are subscribed if you like that. Uh, and then as the stuff comes out, you know, we talked Matthew Stafford in a, in our previous episode. So make sure you go check that out. Um, as well as we'll be talking to Sean Watson, if he's potentially on the move, any of that stuff from a fantasy perspective, uh, we'll try and jump into that. We got March madness around the corner. Yes. So hopefully we can find a way to get some bets. The big 10 Ugh. is all over the, all over the, uh, the top 10. And I'm loving every second of that. Uh, but for Brian twining, I'm Kyle Robert. Uh, enjoy the super bowl, yes. make some delicious food, catch some tickets, and we'll see y'all, uh, next week.